All right, so we looked a little bit about uh, how to post on Google+. Plus. What to post is still up to you. Read those articles on socialmediaexaminer.com to get uh, ideas. But let me show you a couple of powerful ways to use Google+, Plus to find your audience. Uh, one is if you go to the Collections screen. Collections is one way to help you get found and followed. You go to Collections, it'll show you Featured, Following, and yours. Because I've got a brand new account, it doesn't really know what to show me. So it's showing me Street Art Finland, Sand Sculptures, Neuroscience. As I use Google+, I fill out the account, I post. As I start to use it, it'll start to suggest to me things that make more sense. These are featured, so I'm going to ignore them for the moment. Following well, I haven't followed any accounts yet, any collections. If I choose to follow a collection, that's like following a person. I'm going to see their stuff. But following a collection is a little bit better because I'm only following that topic. If a person creates collections, and in one topic they're doing political opinions, another one is cat photos, another one is financial info. Well, I'm only interested in the financial info, maybe. So I'll follow their collection of finance instead. And yours is your own collection. So think about now in the opposite terms, Victor's Bakery. I'm going to post pictures and links and all of that about baked goods, but I'm going to post some that are, you know, gluten-free recipes, some vegan-friendly recipes, some traditional recipes, you know, different recipes and grouping them together in a topic that's a collection. So that someone can choose to follow me and they choose to focus on what the specific topic is. Let's, let's look at this. So click on yours there and click on create collection. It asks for a name of a collection, if it's public or not. But I would keep it on public because if you change it to something else, it cannot be changed again. And most of the time, you want all of this stuff that you do on a social network public. You want people to find it. You don't want to diminish your audience. There are examples why you want, might want to put things private or change the level of privacy. But most of us want the business completely public because I want an audience. For Victor's Bakery, let's say I'm going to write, if I write cookies, everything that I post that is related to cookies will go in this collection. But if you have a little bit more of an active voice when you create these collections, studies show people are more enticed. For example, tasty cookies or you know, fun cookies for kids. All three of those ideas of a collection name are the same, cookies. But one is just very plain, cookies. One was fun cookies, one or tasty cookies. This is fun cookies for kids. So the content of what's going to be in this collection, hopefully, are going to be cookies that you post, that I post, that are fun for kids. Well, I'm trying to sell, ultimately, I'm trying to sell these cookies. So by posting them together, grouping them together in a collection, people can hopefully find it a little better, and then choose to follow me, reply to me, buy the cookie, etc. I have 80 characters to explain a little bit more what's here. We offer the best and healthiest cookies for your little ones. In 180 characters, putting in more text, which could help you get found. If people search for cookies on Google+, Plus, they may find this. If they search for healthy cookies, they may find this. So think in terms of active and active phrasing and keywords to help you get found. We'll say create collections. To group together your posts on a topic. Then a name should entice people 
to follow you. The description should have keywords to get you found, to help you get found. But not literally 20 keywords, real sentences with the keywords you know, vegan friendly, gluten free, affordable, whatever. I should write sentences with those keywords. Create two to three collections and add three to five posts to each. So when I posted a little while ago, that was public. That wasn't organized. That was being sent out to anyone that stumbles upon it. If I focus a little bit more with collections, the people that are interested on a topic can find my posts a little easier and then choose to follow that topic. You don't want to create 12 collections that are empty. What's the point of that? So to start off with, two collections and post three things in each of them. So that's going to be six posts. That's effort to figure out what to put into them. So don't bite off more than you can chew. Create a collection or two that makes sense, and then post something to it to show this is what you're in store for if you follow this collection. Is there a limitation of the collection? I don't think so. You can probably have dozens or hundreds. I don't think there's a limit. And does the public can add something to the collection? That's a good point. Only you can add to a collection. But we will see that with a community, then the public can add. So we'll cover collections first and then communities. But only you can add to the to the collection. So Convert collection to communities? Not exactly convert, but you can create communities. And we'll see communities in a moment. The people in the circle can add any photos, anything to the community? Yes. It can be very open. Only you can add to a collection. And we'll look at communities. It's related in a moment. So let's say I'm creating this collection, I click Create, and then I, now I have an empty community that I can, uh, collection that I can start to style a little bit. I can change the color here a little bit. I can add a photo. I can upload my own photo or use a pre-made photo. I can style the color a little bit. Click Save. Your collection is now visible. Time to share. So I start to post. I can click the little uh, pencil there and add pictures, links, polls, the same sorts of content that I did previously. And now this is going to a collection. This is showing right there. Victor's Bakery. A little while ago it said I was posting to public so anyone can find it. Now this is saying it's posting to my collection. This is the symbol for collection. If I go back to the menu, collections on yours, I have one collection. I would create another one, add some stuff, and it'll tell me my followers. But I would want to I would want to um, put stuff in these collections. Yes? What happens when you tag one? It's there, but you don't see it until the person clicks to view it. And then they'll see it here. So I can create collections, and I can see here under Featured some examples. So here's someone, Alex Garcia, is apparently posting content, you know, historical stuff, 50 years ago. So I can click to follow. Now I'll start to see the stuff that he posts there. That sounds interesting. I'll also click um, Cape 
Smithsonian, the archaeological site from John Tricariotes. So I'll click follow there. So I've chosen to follow those and I can unfollow. But what's happening in these collections is if I click, I'll start to see all of these items. There was oh, look at that, that's the very first mouse. That, yeah, that wooden thing was the first mouse. It has the technology of the current mouse, but it was made out of wood. So here's uh, here's all of this content. Monterey Pop Festival in 67. Uh, so I want people to follow. He's got 111,000 followers. The stuff he's posting here is interesting to people, and 111,000 people have chosen to follow. I want that. So based on what he's doing, his, his idea is this, that he has this content and he's posting all of that. see if I go back again to collections. Sometimes it changes to give me different suggestions. So here we have classic cars underwater photography. Let's say I am a photographer and I want to get hired to do photography. So I can create some collections with my different styles of photography, upload those, and people may then search and find me. This underwater photography has 11,000 followers. It's not, it, it's there, but it's not incredibly useful. Uh, it does tell you at the corner of each post when it was posted. And there's really no way then to organize it. It's just going to be in the order of when it was put. So if there was something here from a month ago, I have to scroll back to find it from a month ago. There's no easy way to find something from a month ago. So community, uh, collections is a, is a good way to help you get found and followed and all of that. You still have to put in the work of creating the community and updating it and, and make the collection. You have to put in the, the work of updating the collection. Um, and I think collections are, are good, but I think communities are gooder, <laughs> even better. <laughs> communities. So whatever we talk about collections, it's good, make a note of it. Communities are way better. Let's talk about communities because these, this is the big secret to Google+. This is how you become famous or effective on Google+. The big secret, the one weird trick to Google+. Use communities. Let's talk about that in detail. Communities, as I said previously, are places where people congregate on a topic. Where people congregate on a topic and all can post there. So, looking at the screen of communities, is similar to collections in that there are recommended or featured communities. Here it's recommending why not join the Pro Football Writers Newswire community or the social media strategy community. This will change for different people or join the gaming community. Well the point is for the Pro Football Writers Newswire there are 47,000 people on Google Plus, people or companies that have joined on that topic. They're all on Google Plus focused together on that topic, 47,000. There are 351,000 in the social media strategy. You can think about it as forums or bulletin boards, communities. They're together on a topic. Some of them simply say join, some of them say ask to join. Before you click join on any of them, if you click the icon to view it, you will see what's what's it about. You will see some Again, pictures and text of people, whatever they post. You will see on the left the members. You can click there to see the, all the members, the name of the community. There's often a little section of about the community, and often rules about the community. 
So I'm going to say that communities are the best way to use Google+, but there are a lot of caveats, a lot of things to be aware of. Be aware. To use communities effectively, be aware of the following. Join communities about the topics of your business. You don't get much of a value of joining, let's say, Victor's Bakery. I'm going to join one of those video game communities. My business is not about video games. It's about baking and such. So I want to join baking communities, cooking communities, you know, um, recipe communities. I want to join communities about my business. Read and follow the rules of the community. Someone created the community and they put down rules. Because like forums and bulletin boards, someone is probably moderating it, watching the posts and keeping it on topic. Who is doing this depends on who created the community. And the people that create the communities are not Google Plus employees. They're not affiliated with Google+. They don't work for Google+. They're plain old people that decided to create a community on a topic, and they will then set the rules, and you follow their rules. You have to follow the general rules of Google+, and then you have to follow the rules of a community. So let's take a quick look at one of these communities, this Pro Football Newswire, the official voice of pro football writers promoting and fighting for access to NFL personnel to best serve the public. So there's links here to go further look at things. Kind of seems like the topic of this isn't quite what it's supposed to be. <laughs> the people that are trying to moderate this have either stopped moderating it or there's so much junk that they can't get to it. Cool <laughs> photo, but this doesn't, you know, breaking news? He put it under the topic of breaking news. So <laughs> this community seems to be overrun with spam. This community seems to be a lost cause. So. If I go back to communities, let's say I'm looking at this one of social media. This one's got 351,000 about the community. A heavily moderated and curated community talking about digital marketing and marketing strategy. Trying to join? Skip the long queue and click here. This community may have one of the highest moderation bars of any community, but we do this to provide the best value for our members. This is the complete opposite of the one a moment ago. The other one's the Wild West. This one has people actually writing something. And most likely, Stephen right here is going to get removed because he's not following the rules of, most likely down here it says, when you post something, make sure you post something meaningful and not just your address. Well, it's up to the community and the people that created it and how they manage it to manage it how they want. If they are very strict, they're strict. You can't complain, you know, to Google Tech Support. I, someone is being, someone is removing my posts in the community. They say they're gonna say the person that created or the people that created and run the community run that community. As long as the rules are not being violated about no child pornography and no violence and no sort of thing like that, they can use the communities how they want. So I bring that up because the way communities are so valuable is right now I have zero followers. If I search up here for baking, this is going to search in Google Plus for collections, communities, and people and posts about baking. I'm going to see communities about baking, 106,000 members. I have zero followers. If I join that baking community, now I have the ability to post into the community. I have an audience of 106,000 now, instantly. Clicking here, this will be sent to the baking community. That's that little icon. I'm not going to make 106,000 sales by saying, use this coupon to buy this cupcake. <laughs> but I have a potential audience, as I said previously with Twitter. If you think very conservatively in terms of 1%, 1% 1 
1% of your followers on Twitter are often the ones that are going to follow through, of actually going to buy, 1% of 106,000 is a good number. So great, I'm going to write a post here and say we have a sale this Saturday, here's our coupon, click here. However, did you read the rules? Maybe the community says no self-advertising allowed. Let's see if we find here about community. A community where everyone who enjoys the sweeter side of life come connect and discuss baking related. It seems pretty open. They're not they're not putting very many or any constraints. That other community said some, some say, like, only post one thing per day. Some might say, no cross-posting, meaning don't post the same thing on three communities. Well, how do they know? If someone is passionate enough about the community, they are a moderator, and they're going to check, was this post copied to three communities or not? And they can check that. Some might say, okay, only post one self-promotional post per month. You don't know. Each community is different. Read the rules, follow the rules. Because what could happen, the consequences are, you know, I made a post into the baking community, but it wasn't baking, it was frying. I'm frying food, not baking food. Well, what could happen is that one of the moderators, you can see who the moderators are by clicking the members and then seeing show me the moderators. There's only one moderator. So Jennifer could come to my post and put a message that says, sorry, this topic is not about our community. Next level could be, they remove your post. They, it's a lot easier, you know, to shoot first, ask questions later. Uh, you're guilty until proven innocent. They're going to assume you're posting spam, so they may remove your post because you didn't follow the rules. Worst, worst case scenario is they remove you from the community. And I just lost access to 106,000 people. So this is the big thing to be careful about. Read and follow the rules of the community. Join as many as you want and use them, but follow the rules because you can get, get kicked out of this community and lose that audience. It has happened to me, and I have tried to you know, appeal it, and it doesn't work. If the person runs the community like a dictator, there's nothing you can do. There's no regime change you can do. If they decide to kick people out because they don't like how you wrote, you can't complain to anyone for that. Yes? Um, so you showed us how to make two different accounts, one business and one personal on Google. Mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook, if you're a business and you have a business account, you're not able to just message uh, the public. You can only you're exactly. limited to who you can mm -hmm. talk to. It's mm -hmm. not the same case with Google. But uh, it has some limitation like that also. So the so the, the question and the problem is that these networks try to limit the reach of businesses to regular people because spammers abuse that. So we suffer because I'm not a spammer, but I want to reach out to regular people. But the networks rather shoot first, ask questions later. So we don't have a lot of this control as a business to reach directly to customers. Twitter is completely open. A business can reach a customer, unfettered. Google Facebook, we see that limitation. It has we can't do some of that. Google Plus has some of that as well, that you can't reach an audience directly. The best thing, however, is reach your audience via the communities. Go to communities about the customers that you're trying to find and post there. They will then get, they will then view, because they've chosen to follow that community, they will view what you're kind of sending to them by a back channel through the community. I recommend everyone join the Google Plus Help community. If you search Google Plus, there should be a community called Google Plus Help. This is the, one of the few official Google Plus communities from the Google company. And there are moderators here that can kind of help you how to use Google Plus and, and figure out disputes and such. And I've gone there, and I've gone with documentation. There's this community about photography that I was involved in. And I was sharing f photos, I was following the rules, this was for my personal account. And I was sharing photos, and I kept seeing that my photos were being removed by the moderator. There was one moderator, kept getting removed. 
So eventually, I was removed from the community, and I thought I was following the rules. So I went to the Google Plus help, and I showed screenshots. This is what I posted. These are the rules. I, I got my stuff removed, and I got removed. What can you do? And they told me, we cannot do anything. As long as the community is not violating the general rules of Google Plus, we cannot step in and put you back into the community or do anything. If that moderator is breaking the rules of Google+, Plus, they might be able to do something about that, but the moderation is left to the moderators of a community. You either follow the rules or you don't use the community. The ones that are asked to join are often a little more strict. These that say join, I can click join on all of these and I have access to the people. Ask to join, someone in that community is going to go check you out. They're going to go to your profile. They're going to read your bio. They're going to see what you've posted. They're going to see what you're about to let you in beforehand. That's why I'm telling you, fill in your biography, add some posts, set up your account. Because if you want to join one of these very valuable communities that says ask to join, you have to prove yourself. So if I'm looking at local search dynamics, 98,000 members, all of these moderators, see all of these people together have the goal of keeping this community on topic. On topic is right here about welcome to this, formerly the Google Plus small business, whatever, we have a strong focus on local, discussion notes, self-promotion is not allowed, and individual intros are not allowed. See the link below for more info. Well, if that sounds so restrictive, what's in it for me? Nothing. So don't join it. Don't try to go against the rules because you're just going to get kicked out. You've wasted your time. Community guidelines must read. So I'll go off there. I'll read this. Please do not start individual intros. Self-promotion not allowed. Promoting your business or service is not allowed. Linking to your own site, blog, or video is not allowed. Posting fluff just to try to get exposure is not allowed. This is not the place to advertise your business. So it sounds really restrictive. Like, what's the point? Maybe there's a point. I'm not going to read it, but maybe there's a point to join this community. So communities are great. They're the best thing on Google+. But read the rules and follow the rules of the community. And you'll get a good result. I'll also say... Don't join small communities. Don't join too large communities. Small is going to depend. At the very least, I say don't join communities of less than a thousand people. Smaller than that, it's too small. The gene pool is too small. You're not going to reach a good audience. Uh, you know, 10,000 or more is better. The big ones, you know, 800,000 members, 1 million members, 2 million members, you're going to be a needle in a haystack. It's going to be a lot of activity that's going to drown you out when you're in a big community. So it's a really huge range, but I would say perhaps between 10,000 and 500,000 members is a good range. If there's a community with only 8,000 people, it might be okay. 8,000 might be sustainable enough for you to post stuff and have people follow you and all of that. And you may join a community of 742,000, and it may work out that the amount of activity that happens doesn't drown you out. Yes? Your local was San Diego. What good is it posting to bakery communities if it's worldwide? There is that downside about that we cannot target locally. This community is global. So I would try to find baking San Diego. I would try to find communities that are local for my local business. But it's not going to be 10,000. It's going to be 50 or 100. Yeah, so then it might not be valuable at all. So maybe, in this case, it's not working for my business. Uh, it's too global. 
So every network has the possibility of success or not for a variety of factors, but well, that's a good point. Now, before joining a community, let's say I'm looking at these and I see that I meet the requirements. This one's got 61,000. I read the rules and it seems that the rules are doable. And I'm going to click join. No, I would still, before joining a community, browse it to see if it's active and viable. So by that, I mean, okay, there's 11,000 members in this community, and I'm going to go look at it. It's the same people posting over and over. There's not enough activity. No one is commenting and replying. No one is liking. No one is active. It's just, it's been kind of abandoned. People joined it and they forgot all about it. Let me see if I can find an example. Cooking. I'm going to try to find cooking. Communities. Families cooking with kids. Ask to join. Okay, let's say cooking and baking. 581. Recipes cooking food. Okay, 84,000. Let's go to a smaller one here. June's cooking kitchen. 26,000 members. So it's above my threshold. But before I join, I'm going to click. I would read the rules. Let's say I already did do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts. Is. Advertising and spam, bullying and foul language. So it's not so restrictive. The do's, share recipes, max of two posts per website per day. If you post food pics with no link, describe it at least in English or give a short explanation. Okay, it's doable. Let's say that I'm looking. So I've got June, she posted something. Love, four hours ago. Mummy's fantasy, fast and easy four hours ago, Anna, four hours ago. Okay, so people are active four hours ago, seven hours ago. There's June again. Mom's Tasty Food, Nalini, Katina, Food Lovers. Okay, people people seem to be posting. But if you look, Love posted this. There's no activity below it. Here's the likes, the plus one. This one's got 32 likes, 32 plus ones. One share. This one's got one like, no shares. This one has one like, no shares. One like, no shares. There's no activity. People are posting, but no one is following through. No one cares. It's just people posting their photos and moving on. This one got three. I don't know why that chicken looks terrible, <laughs> but that got three, three likes. I'm seeing no comments. The comments would appear right below it. I'm seeing no comments. I'm seeing no shares. There's 20,000 whatever people in this community, but it's not active. It's a dumping ground. People are posting their post and moving on. This got three likes. Okay, that one's nice. That one's a honey, almond, gluten-free flax bread, but it really only got three results. So just because you've got a lot of people doesn't mean you've got a lot of useful activity. And that's what I'm saying here. Don't join a community until you check it out to see if it's active and viable. Vegetarian cooking, 46,000. 10 hours ago, 12 hours ago, one day ago, two days ago, four days ago. Kind of old, even though it's got more users, the topics that have been posted are a little older. Four likes, three likes, three likes, one like, five likes. It's a little more active. The posting is a little older, doesn't seem as active based on these dates. But people are a little more active. People are commenting a little bit more. Five, four, etc. Looking at the people: Sharmila, Smitha, Julie, Mukti, Muthulakshmi, Muthulakshmi again, Mukti again. So you're seeing. Perhaps the same people a little bit often-ish. You are seeing some activity a little bit more than the other one. This one might be one to join. 
cooking and recipes, 54,000 people. And probably the one with ask to join is the one with more meaningful activity, but probably more rules to follow. Sharing smart, fun ways for families to shop, cook, and eat a rainbow of whole foods together. Community, please share your recipes. Limit to three posts per day. It's pretty open-ended, but you have to first, first get verified. Someone's going to check your account. One of these moderators here. This one's got only two two moderators to keep track of 273,000 people. It's kind of small, but one of them at some point will check your account to let you in, and then you have access to 273,000 people. <clears throat> one final thing about communities, do not create your own communities. If you notice on the community screen, you have featured, following, or member. I'm a member of this one community. And I have yours. Create your own community. Don't create your own community. Now you'll have even more work to do. Not only do you have to find a valid community, post to it, set up collections and post to them, not only do you have to be active, now you've got to be a moderator. Now you've got to keep this community in line or it will be overrun with spam, off-topic stuff, hate speech, bullying, whatever. You have to keep it in check. If you say, well, I'll set it up, ask to join. You have to keep track of who's trying to join and approve them and check their profile to let them in. So you can create your, your own community. I don't recommend it. It's too much work. Find communities related to the topics of your business, join as many of them as you want, follow the rules, post to them, and use them to your advantage. It does work. For clients that we get hired for, we do the social networks for all, the for, all the, for all of them that they hire us to do. And oftentimes, we get really good results for the client on Google Plus communities. Easier than the other networks. When we talk about Facebook, we'll see how to use Facebook effectively for a business. But here, for free, what you're paying is for your time and effort. And if you have some of that, uh, then it's completely free. So I've seen it also in creating communities that it is more, more effort, more work. Uh, I am a moderator of one of two communities, and it is the work about keeping it spam free, keeping it on topic. Just follow, find a community, and stick with it. So we'll wind down the lecture, have a little lab time, but that's the big idea with Google Plus. It's just another platform, it's not another broadcast medium to find an audience. Again, it's up to you to shoot a good photo to share. It's up to you to write a good article to post. It's up to you to think of a poll or something funny to write. That part I can't teach, but I can guide you toward socialmediaexaminer.com and other such sites where you will find plenty of articles that say ideas of how to use Facebook if you're a lawyer. How to use Google Plus for local businesses. Get ideas and articles on this or many other kinds of sites instead of me trying to teach something that won't work for everyone. What I will say is use Google Plus, create the account, use communities, post content. Before we wrap up, people will, will always ask, Should I or do I should I post the same thing to every network? It's going to be a lot of work. We're going to talk about several networks. Do I need to create something new for every network? I get that question very, very often. Reason why yes or why no? Yes, easier 
to manage that. If you post the same thing on all the networks, the same picture, the same text and such, on all the networks, it's easier. I'm, I've got it ready to publish on all the networks. Reason for not to do it is each network has a demographic. Each network has a culture, a style. That little tweet that I crafted for Twitter, now it's a little small. I could write more for Google Plus or Facebook. I have more space. Maybe what I'm posting on Instagram doesn't work on Facebook because the audience there is not the same. Reason for yes, why you want <clears throat> why you want uh, the same thing consistency in brand in branding or messaging. It's on topic, it's the same thing. It's unified. One reason not to post the same thing, entice people to join that network. I'm already following you on Facebook. Why would I also go follow you on Google Plus? Well, there's new stuff there. There's different content there. Entice people to go follow you there. I'll say here regarding that beginner, intermediate, advanced. Same text and picture or multimedia, which would be a video, an audio, a link, whatever. Same text and picture, all networks. Intermediate. Same, uh, same picture or multimedia, different text. So you may have this content that you're sharing. It's not your classic. Same picture, different text. You can have the, um, I'm doing Victor's Bakery. I'm sharing a cupcake. I'm trying to sell that cupcake. I can use the same picture on Facebook and Google+. But I'm going to write different text on each of them. On Google+, I'm going to write, use our coupon code XYZ for 10% off. And then on Facebook, I'm going to write, send us an email to request a free coupon. Same picture, different text. So you have different content on each network. And advanced, different picture, different text. Now you see that's a lot more work, a different idea for every network. And if you're on two different networks, it's not so bad. But if you're on six different networks, it's a lot of work, a lot of effort. So you're perfectly fine the beginner or intermediate way, and I and you'll see that the intermediate way, I recommend that one, and that one's not that hard. It's you've got the picture, or you've got the link, but you just have to think of a different way to to promote it or share it on each network. We'll look at it in detail next time, but over the weekend what you could do is look at website to help you manage more than one network. People then ask, well, if I'm trying to manage more than one account at once, is there an easy way to do it all at once? Yes, you can look at this over the weekend and we'll look at it later, buffer.com. This is a way for you to connect all the networks together and on one login manage them all at once free account and it will let you connect to your networks. There's a paid version that will let you connect and do more things. Look at it over the weekend and then when we come back we'll look at Buffer in detail. Question? Any question? No? Okay. So in general, uh, any questions about what we talked about today? We'll have a little lab time. Yes? What about Hootsuite? Isn't that one to use? Hootsuite, um, Hootsuite's a little limiting. Um, that's another one, yeah, but I would recommend it, yeah. Okay, just, uh, just one moment. So uh, we're going to wrap up. I'm going to put my notes in the folder. I'm going to upload these videos. We need to be out by 12.55, and we'll do it again next week.